At the Lady Clipper Barbershop in Washington, D.C., chairs are empty, clippers untouched, and razors silent. It's very stressful because we don't know when we are going to reopen and, you know, how we're going to pay our bills long term if the shutdown continues. Shop owner Leslie Bryan hopes the additional $310 billion approved by Congress for the Paycheck Protection Program will help ease her anxiety. I do worry about my staff because they have children and families to maintain. I do have to make sure that they have some place to come back to, and that is a huge responsibility that I do not take lightly. Congress initially created the program last month as part of the CARES Act. It made $349 billion available to small businesses and individuals to help cover payroll and other expenses. But the money ran out, leaving thousands of black business owners like Bryant wondering when or if they might see relief. This is typical of when you have a program that is not segmented and marketed uh, by community and directly to people. It actually drives more inequity even if it is something that is well-meaning. The Paycheck Protection Program relies primarily on the traditional banking system, highlighting long-standing disparities in minority-owned businesses' access to lending. What we saw was really an absence of black business relationships with banks in particular and financial institutions broadly. Uh, so they were left in the dark of where do I go? Perhaps the largest reason for that is that the banks don't exist anymore in their neighborhoods. There are banking deserts throughout every urban area in America. Though the government has not required lenders to track and report the race of Paycheck Protection Program recipients, existing research shows fault lines in who gets access to bank financing. Over two times more black business owners were denied bank loans than white business owners. And even when adjusting for wealth and credit worthiness, black and Latino owned businesses rely less on bank financing. According to a 2019 study, 28% of black business owners relied on personal funds as a primary funding source compared to 16% of white owners. Cortega Collins is the owner of the Good Shepherd Infant and Toddler Centers in St. Louis, Missouri. She knows firsthand how hard it can be to qualify for finances to launch a small business. I reached out to, you know, regular banks, the big banks here in St. Louis, Missouri, um, and I was unable to get any help at all. I came against so many obstacles trying to get someone to finance my vision. From a bank standpoint, I was uh, not credit worthy. That's when she turned to Justine Peterson for help, a community development financial institution, or CDFI, in St. Louis. So we're very much a hybrid of social work and banking. This is all about making sure that dollars are available for those businesses that heretofore have been shut out by mainstream finance and have not had the opportunity to access safe and affordable capital. It's a concern that seems to have been overlooked in the first round of the Paycheck Protection Program. After a public outcry and who was getting the loans, almost 90 Democratic members of Congress asked the Trump administration to ensure that minority-owned businesses are not shut out of federal rescue money. Experts say the smaller the business, the more difficult it is to absorb a financial shock like COVID-19, especially for Black-owned businesses where 96 percent have no employees. That's compared to 80 percent of businesses overall. Part of the new Paycheck Protection Program funding now includes a $60 billion set aside for smaller community-based lending institutions that are more likely to serve minority-owned businesses. They were key in not only helping Collins get initial financing, but also secure a Paycheck Protection Program loan after she was unable to get answers from her credit union. From the PPP loan, I was able to get about $27,000. So I'm able to pay some of my rent and also to pay for my utilities. And then not only that, I'm able to make my payrolls. But some are concerned that even with the new provisions, the second round of funding will fall short. The set aside is definitely something that we embrace, but we feel one, it's probably not enough money. And two, there's just not enough CDFIs involved to really make PPP impactful for those businesses most in need. Another barrier is that lenders must be first approved by the Small Business Administration before they can participate in the loan program. Not every CDFI is in a position to administer PPP. There's far too much need than what merely the CDFI community and other mission lenders can actually fulfill. And so as much as round two of PPP is very much uh, um, making the, the program more accessible, I still believe there's gonna be work undone. 
Entrepreneurs like Leslie Bryant are waiting to see if she will get a loan this round and if she'll be able to keep her employees on staff. The notion of more money coming to help small businesses is great. It has been three weeks since I applied for the Paytech Protection Plan. It's a day by day, week by week waiting game. Who knows when it's coming, but I pray that it's coming soon. Angela Hill, Newsy, Washington, D.C.